What's up, guys? We're back here at ComTV.net. Tastosis. We're going into game... <laughs> Sick intro. We're Tastosis, and we're going into game number three here. Um, and, you know, right now it's pretty neck and neck. It is one and one. I guess I, this I is like, neck and neck as it can get. Yes, it's about it's about as even as you can get. <laughs> um, but you know what's interesting? Two about and this two is, is even more even though. Is it artosis? <laughs> yeah, because not only are they even, but it's even numbers. Ooh! All right, well played. Um, I don't know if first is going to win this series, artosis. Can I be totally frank with you? You can. Can, you can I be always, real? You can always real talk. Moment. Unless it'll hurt my feelings. I don't think he can uh, win this series. Okay, uh, that hurts my feelings. I'm sorry. I'm glad we we had this talk. We got this I, out. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, I I do agree that Supernova's <laughs> looking a bit better in the matchup today, yeah. which is again a bit weird. But well, I um, guess you know maybe maybe some of first PVTs that went really well for him. The thing is, I always think back to some of his other PVTs and how well he's always played the matchup. So when the fantasy games came along, I'm like, I'm not too surprised that this guy's playing this well. But maybe that was just like the games of his life. Maybe that was just everything lined up for him all together in one well, night. You know, people <coughs> have the games of their me. life at some point. Well, absolutely. You know, for me, um, I, I like the build in the last game, but I'm wondering if, if he can win more normal uh, you know, standard games. It's a best of five. It's not a best of three. You can't do one timing and one cheese, and maybe you're going to pull it off. Yeah. Um, in best of five... You need two timings and a cheese. <laughs> basically, but the odds of that being as effective... Yeah. I mean, generally speaking... That's why Hyva's games are so exciting. Is normally the cheese. Um, is, Hyva's it's, games it's are the so ability to win. <laughs> it goes away once it's been used once, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to be more vigilant about that. His, his, Hyva's games are more exciting because he never makes it the best of seven stage. Of the <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see what a best of seven uh, that guy would look like. Oh, by yeah. the way, that would be funny. All right. So. <clears throat> Indeed. It is. It is Star time Station to see. is the map, by the way. Okay, this is going to be a good one for Supernova. Yeah. What type of style will first use? I wouldn't mind seeing him go for like maybe a, a charge lot archon type of play timing. You know. Yeah. One of those maybe a, a plus two armor, or even a two two, if he wants to really be crazy. The parting style. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun with these two. I actually do say that I think this map is to Supernova. Okay. Just for his yeah. play style? Probably. I, Unless somebody I, does I, I some kind of all in early on, that of course changes everything. We'll see. Anyways, on to our game and introducing our players in the upper right, playing some of the best games I've ever seen from him. He is... Master, Azubu Supernova. And his opponent over here in the bottom left, a deadly Protoss, will today be his day. He is... New challenger, LGIM first. Did you see, um, I saw on, uh, I think somebody linked it to me is how I found out about it. That, you know, they, you can make arcade games in StarCraft? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, with the map, but are you, you, yeah. you can make, obviously not just maps, you can make, like, other games. Yeah. There's this sick, uh, arcade game. Oh God! Now I'm forgetting the name of it, and I'm not doing it justice. Okay. Um, where you you play as uh, I believe it's like a Zeratul. Okay. And um, it's like a, a platform game. Oh, cool! Complete with like boss fights and everything. Really? Yeah. That's kind of neat. I believe it was made in, uh, in uh, the maker was Chinese. Nice. But it looks badass. Huh. I don't know about you. I never played any of the arcade games. I haven't. Uh, for I Star haven't. Too. I haven't yet either. That's. I'll have to. Someday, give those a try. Someday. Someday. When I get bored of playing the latter, which... Well, I think actually, um, there's because I, I saw the video on YouTube, and um, I, I guess uh, now Blizzard's uh, promoting... Oh, um, yeah. You know, the, like an arcade game of the week kind of thing. Oh, cool. Uh, you've heard of the Star Strikers game, right? Uh, is, is this one of the arcade games? Yeah. I'm going to be totally honest. I know nothing about the arcade okay. games. Okay. It's like a soccer game that everyone's super into right now. Oh, yeah. Like everyone, you use different units and get different abilities. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I kept hearing about it, and then someone, like, linked uh, this this highlight. Apparently, DJ Wheat plays all the time and is really good at it. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> so funny. And apparently, he, like, I, I watched a highlight video of him playing Star Strikers with his little team. 
and he's just like swearing at everyone for like not doing what's right and stuff. <laughs> it's the funniest. Oh, I, I gotta laugh, see dude. this. It was oh, like, I gotta see this. It was like five minutes long, and I just laughed my ass off the entire time. It was so funny. That's so. It's like DJ we get angry at people. It's like, oh, it's, it's past the ball. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen we haven't seen DJ Lee in a while oh, actually. I, him. I miss him. Maybe he's a DT now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have detection. <laughs> That's what happens to DJs after they die in the game. Yeah. No, DJ um, isn't so far from DT. <laughs> um, we actually have double Reaper by the way coming out of this uh, reactor barracks. Just thought you'd like to know. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> the more you know. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an interesting uh, variation from what we're used to seeing Supernova do. But Supernova's really uh, keeping the Reaper in style, you know? Yeah. Uh, and when it's super oh, I shot it off the cliff. It was Whoa, cool. Yeah. That was sick. That fell down into that space. That fell down into space, man. <laughs> <laughs> Artificial gravity exists. This is a Protoss platform. You don't know what technology they have. I mean, you don't know. Don't pretend. Sorry. Tasis, you can't I? even explain magnets, man. No, Come man. That's, that, that's a miracle, man. That's not even... <laughs> science can explain that. No. Artosis. There's no way. <laughs> someone should write a song about that. <laughs> I think someone should write a song about it. I think that's a great idea. This is a cool build. One racks with a reactor and two eBay. Yeah, it's it's quite nice, and he's going to be able to get really quick upgrades and play a very standard game from there. Whereas the Reapers are going to keep some pressure on first. They kind of force him into a little bit more of a defensive stance. And, uh, you know, that's nice. But first is uh, following this up. Pretty, pretty darn standard. He's going into his really quick robo. He's grabbing that sentry. He'll probably throw up his forge in just a matter of seconds. As long as he throws up his forge in a matter of seconds, this is probably going to go into a macro game. But the build that Supernova is using involves some pretty quick pressure with plus one marines, with plus one armor on the way, and some medevacs and whatnot. Uh, so could be a little bit hard for first to hold, depending on how quickly he wants to take his third base. All right. Um... Well, this is a, started out as a, what is a very passive game, which is probably the best way uh, to play, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to be you know, long term, you know, work on being a good pro gamer. Oh my God! I can't believe. Okay, well, it's fine. There's a stalker up there. Yeah, it looks like he just this, gets a good scout He's off. pretty good at making sure those Reapers don't die. Yeah, the Reaper is pretty he's good at Reap that as well. It has a pretty high speed. <laughs> Looks like we got a second bunker coming down here. That was that was two different changes I was thinking about because I've been laddering a lot lately. Huh? Since I'm living the bachelor life for a couple weeks. That's right. The wife's out of town. Uh, I, but that's that's the two things. As you know, the more ladder you play, the more frustrated you become. Because oh no, so the ladder hard. is actually just a source of anger, man. Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, we have a little push out coming with a single immortal. So it kind of looks a little bit almost like an immortal push. But this is like a a longer term plan that we're seeing because he's going right into Warp Prism with it. But, uh... Hold on. This is... It's kind of interesting, because he still doesn't have a Forge up. That's not, like... Well, I the, expected the, a if Forge If you know, I mean, uh, We don't... We, the starport's only just now starting, so we could actually apply pressure at the entrance, force field the ramp from the main. Yes, that's And actually true. elevator everything up there. I think that's a and great idea. I think idea. that's what we're going to see here. I think you're actually right, Tasteless. Uh, there's a lot of bunkers down there. He's, he's making it look like this. The Reaper, though, is going to give him some hints, at least. And inside that is only Zalots. Okay, so he's going to hit the front. Well, no, he can actually pick up uh, with um, one, one sentry. I think that's true. Yeah. I think that's what he's going to do. Would not be a bad call. I think that he could potentially get a lot of damage done with that. We might just go up the force field right there. It's not hard. Actually, that's true. There's really no need. But uh, he's keeping him busy down here. And Picking off a few units here and there, dealing some damage to these zealots. I like this. I actually like this opener. This is kind of cool. Yeah, it's a, definitely a bit different. And I do wonder if he's going to go into an all-in from this, because still no forge. Um. Well, the warp prism's now going back out. Uh, forge goes down. So. And it was just a simple pressure build. Okay. I guess he looks to see if the the other player overreacts, sends too many marines up there. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the funny thing is that that um, for the build Supernova is doing, that's actually a much more abusable build because of the late star port. Sure. There's yeah. a lot more damage mm. you can actually pull off. And you know what? He ended up getting six SCVs, and he ended up killing like five marines as well, or four or five marines. So it wasn't bad. Yeah. It slowed down his splash a little bit, but that doesn't matter because his splash is going to be out by the time the medevacs are out. 
And it slowed down his upgrades a little bit. That's, I guess, the painful piece. But, you know, for that extra damage, not that bad. Well, um, I think the once we get to the point in time where everything is up and running, and we're pretty much almost there for Supernova, you know, Terran really just needs a starport, be upgrading infantry, and has enough barracks. That's, I think, where Supernova is going to shine, because he always wins uh, tactically. Mm. Not so much. His strategies are fine, but it's not some brilliant strategy. The other guy couldn't see him no. coming. He just no. is very standard. Well, here we go. We have a little drop going in behind the minerals. And forces that. It's probably what he was looking for right there. Start forcing out Nexus Cannons. Get rid of that energy. So that when he starts really putting on the damage, you know, he has a couple more medevacs about to pop out. Uh, he's he's going to be feeling I, I, better. I, I, I want to highlight something that you said, actually, Artosis, because I think a lot of people assume, oh, that was a bad idea, because of course he's going to Nexus Cannon. The point is to, to milk all of that. Oh my god, really nicely done by first. Mm. The point is to milk all of that energy out of that uh, Mothership Core. Yeah. So even though these drops are not doing anything, uh, at, at, at first glance, they're actually making it so that, yeah, when a big attack happens, like you said, it's going to do a lot of damage. Well, right now it looks like first is going to go ahead and take his third base. He got massively supply blocked there uh, at 92. He's been at 92 for a long, long time. So that's a little bit painful. But as those pylons finish up, going to continue forward. He's going blink as well. So we definitely could see this game turn into an SCV poll. Yeah, we absolutely could. Another drop over here. He picks up and leaves. Now, again, uh, defense this game much better, by the way. By first. Yeah. Much better. This is more the defense that we were looking for well, in that first you know, game. By the way, there's stalkers this time. So yeah, that those can hit medivacs. <laughs> so that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, again, the third base here, very hard to attack because it's in an open, or very hard to hold, I should say, from an attack because um, the area is so open. Um, so we'll see, you know, with some good drops here from Supernova and a big attack in the front, that could be something that could be a game changer. It certainly could. Now, I think we are going to see a fourth Colossus here. I'm pretty sure about it because there's no te uh, Templar Archives quite yet. And without that, it doesn't make sense. He still has a lot of gas. And there you go. He starts the fourth. And that makes me feel a lot more safe for him because sometimes you see people stop at three and then suddenly an SCV pull comes. They just barely don't have enough splash and they end up dying to it. So... I'm liking the play by first. This is this is much more what I was expecting in this series, and uh, he's doing a very good job. Uh, now the warp prism is going to come in here again, and it has to. It's being hit by. Oh, beautiful! A uh, couple zolts get out, but not the biggest deal, as there is a very well placed bunker there. Yeah. Um, with a nice uh, setup with the depots around it and everything. And that's actually smart. You really need to have that, especially when you go into endgame PVT, because eventually they're going to start using warp uh, prism harass. Yeah. And it's always going to be zealots they warp in. They have to do a mineral dump. So um, moments like that, it is, uh, it, it's just, I mean, that can save your life. It's, it's so true. Uh, that's It's one of the most powerful moves. In fact, he's going to want to remake a Warp Prism eventually here. Mm -hmm. But one thing I do want to point out is he actually canceled that fourth Colossus, which is kind of neat. So he actually saw something that made him say, and I think it was that third CC going up, that, oh, he's not just going to come and try to bust me with a bunch of SCVs. I actually I want that extra gas I for need some to get additional Templars. Yeah, quicker upgrades, quicker size Storm. Yeah. Because if you're not going to die before the size Storm's out, you want the size Storm as quickly as possible. All right, we got another drop coming up over here. And uh, I like the fact that he's utilizing that little, uh, it's almost like a little peninsula yeah, <laughs> at the top of the base. It's one of the most annoying places uh, on the map, actually, for Protoss to try to defend against Terran. Nice. Uh, just takes another pylon over here. A lot of damage being done, but there is Blink, don't forget. And, oh, just barely doesn't get it. couple more forges on the way, as he did the, go ahead and lose that last forge, unfortunately. It's going to impact his upgrades a fair amount. It's going to be just a little bit behind on him now, instead of uh, equal. So, uh, again, Protoss has to just maintain this defensive posture. There's not much else you can do. The supplies right now. Okay, there it is. The timing. Oh god. Now, I think so this timing funny. actually was off. Yeah. Yeah. Let me because count the, he has nine high templars. He's not going to die to this. Well, that and he has side storm. Oh wait, no. Actually, there are some ghosts. There are two ghosts. So, so this might be an unusual timing, which it's hinged on EMP. Yeah. It, he knows. Is, with nine high templars. I, it's a tall order to make sure that none of those have storm. He has them spread enough. He's going to do like the retreating side storms. Look, yeah. Oh, beautiful. 
Okay, yeah, that'll even, die, not a big deal. Well, it means just to buy time, you know. And the longer this. this game goes on from here on out, the next few seconds, the better it is for the Brodas. All right, takes out that Templar, no storms, uh, blanketed down there. That leaves him one EMP left, and there it goes. Okay, That's, he still has two more Templars over here on the left. That's right. Uh, right now he has seven Templars left somewhere, and he just needs to hit a couple good storms, and he should be fine. Now the Vikings doing a great job, actually, picking off these Colossi so quickly. Such a huge arc, and Supernova may actually power what? through the storms. I think he just did. I'm actually not sure where the other High Templars are. Yeah, I don't know. Because he still has four. Where? I think they're in the main. Just go check the main. Uh, yeah, this is just don't see them, but uh, you know what? This it, is actually it. He just killed him, I think. Maybe, but most of that on the ground is Vikings, and he still has three base economy. So uh, if he can clear it, maybe. I think he's going to get so many probes here, and there's so right. many marauders. You know, there's just it, it, and, and it, the rate at which the Protoss can produce. I don't know if the Zealots are going to be enough. You hmm. know. He can't get something else like a storm out here to deal with this. And this is going to be an endless stream of units, by the way. They, uh, it is coming down, but he's going to clean up this piece without losing that Nexus. He's at 52 probes against 29 SCDs. So, uh, this is actually, you know what? He can absolutely hold this. He's making a lot of Archons. He's going to have to micro these just right. Make sure they actually get hits on. Huh. But there is that endless supply of units coming down. So, first has to be very careful still. Yeah. This is not 100% his victory yet. Um, well, that was a big surprise. First, okay, Super Devin taps out. GG. For a little bit there, I was like, oh my god. Well, it, does this actually it, work? It should it, have. There were so many high templars and so much side storm, but actually, I'm not sure where all of them were. I saw actually one was up at the top of the map. I think he was waiting for medevacs or something. Oh, that could be. Uh, but, you know, he, he got the side storm out quick enough. It was funny, too, because we, we mentioned, all right, this could be uh, an SCV pull. But yeah. once I saw that side storm was more than halfway done, I'm like, well, it's not. And then he actually pulls out right when it's done. I, I'm under the impression maybe he had the timing wrong. He may have. Uh, you know, based off that initial attack, the one, the one with the warp prism. It was a funny. The zealots, the, it was a funny early game. It could have thrown him off. A you little know, bit. one thing that's uh, interesting about this is that, uh, for those of you guys at home, um, pro gamers know that if they're not touched, they know the exact second they should push out what what their supply yeah. should be. Everything down to a T. And I'm wondering if that might have um, thrown him off a little bit. That initial attack? It definitely could have. It did change the timings of everything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when someone does go Blink Stalker Immortal, I mean, Blink Stalker uh, Colossus, yeah. that's a good time to do an SCV pull. But he kind of, he did get it wrong a little bit. You know, there was enough harassment, I think, that it changed the timings of everything. I think not only did it slow Supernova down a little bit, but it made first a little bit more secure to cut a few more edges because yeah. he knew that his opponent had to be at home being a little bit more defensive. You know, it's... Uh it's interesting. I really feel like um, that game was just kind of weird. It was the timing of everything. It was it was a different game. I liked yeah. it though. It was I I liked that opening build. It was kind of neat how he from Protoss or Terran from Protoss. How he kind of because the Terran one was pretty standard. You don't see the double Reaper from Reactor all the time, but it was not that far out there. Whereas a single Immortal and three Sentries walking across the map, you look at that and as Terran you build the bunkers. You just have to, and then a War Prism flies and starts killing SCVs. That's that's kind of neat, and you're not going to lose the War Prism at that point, so that thing is going to be a, threading, a threat to you the entire time. Yeah. Uh, we're actually going right into uh, game oh, number four. Apparently it's actually already loaded up. Uh, the map will be Whirlwind. Should be a good map for Supernova. Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, Terran have a hard time dealing with the